Hey guys. Sorry for the glitchy green screen. I'm hoping that that isn't too bad when we go to guest mode. Um, it's glitching out a little bit because I think, I don't know, it's folded. Maybe the lights aren't bright enough. Let's see what we got here. We got new light. There we go. If I want to be washed out completely, that's perfect. Um, we got new lights. We got a new setup here. We're, we're ready to go. So hopefully that is bright. Holy cow. All right. We did mess with this beforehand, and I don't know why it's probably because I messed with it in Microsoft Teams and not in this. I think it'll work. All right. Let me get these glasses off so you don't see those rings of sore on my face. Um, anyway, welcome. Thanks for coming. As usual, uh, got some new faces in here. Ryan always brings his own crowd. So uh, we have Ryan with us tonight from Springtails US. As you can see, the one thing that's coming in on the green screen, um, we're going to try to start featuring our, our guest logos above my head or near my head. Um, so, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, we have Loach Carlucci. It's my new favorite name. Next to Vico Bubbles, that's number two. Uh, we have some treats for you and for me. Uh, Victor was supposed to be back today, so I got an A&W root beer just for him. So um, if he comes back, hopefully. I'm hoping that it pairs well with the Tijuana Mama pickled sausage. Yeah, that's going to be way too bright. There we go. 400% hotter than the Big Mama. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrified of this, guys. I, I never heard of a pickled sausage. It's like an orange hot dog. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping there's no vomit. Uh, but this, yeah, this looks gross. Oh, we got Scott Ellicott. We got Wally. Um, Wally's going to have a seizure. The sausages are gas. All right. Yeah, I saw these at a gas station. Bio activities here. Invertebrate dude. Beetle guy, as always. Yeah, Scott, it's going to be gross. Doug Maness. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Mans. <laughs> it might be Manus. Manus? That's probably not up. That's in the original French, I think. Uh, Manus is clearly French. Uh, but yeah, so Ryan's here. Springtails US. He's going to teach us how to set up some Springtails. He's got a surprise for us. He's going to show us how to like the consistency you want for your clay if you're doing a clay setup which is mostly his preferred thing apparently um and we're gonna go over some basic and advanced care okay um artemis pude is here all right i don't know who that is but welcome background is going to give us all vertigo all right i'll have to change it i was trying to honor van gogh uh with the well it depends on where i put my head with the uh, the mess that we had. So let me bring Ryan on. I'll change the background while he introduces Springtails US and we'll see where it goes from there. And my face is bright. Ryan, welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, that didn't change at all. So let me get it. I can't see anything with this new light rig. Everything is in my face. So let me get into that and you go ahead and talk to the peoples. Oh boy, I'm not a good host. Yeah. Uh, Springtails US, changing the game, bringing Springtails to the public, appreciating the tens of thousands of species that are out there, that sort of thing. We're going to make it happen. Tens of thousands. That sounds like more than ice pods. Oh, so, thousands. Not to, yeah, I mean, it could be tens of thousands. There's plenty. Um, I'm imagining there's more Springtails than ice pods. Because you're finding uh you're finding them in the same areas, right? A bunch of different species in the same area. Oh yeah, you can find I've found more than a dozen just in my back. See, I haven't even found any in my backyard, but to be fair, I haven't looked. So I'm sure they're there, but my backyard's about this big. Um, and I still don't mow it. Like that's how lazy I am with that. So you quite like springtails. Miles likes springtails. Um yeah, no, I have a real green screen. Sorry, Miles. I went legit. That's patron dollars at work. So, see, Ryan, you got to get a patron. Uh, get that money, son. Um, how long have you been collecting springtails now? Uh, maybe two years ish. Two years ish. Yeah. Um, probably yeah. 
and you're the guy, right? You're the top guy in America for Springtails. Is that right? Yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> we have no certification, but I'm going to give him, he's the top guy in ISO Buddies. I'm going to give him a stamp of approval. Um, at least way better than Josh's frogs. So, which is setting the bar pretty low. Wasn't but, supposed to um, talk smack today, so we're not going to get the. I got it. I got you, man. Um, I'm just following up on Ben Quintanas. Like, he's the man, so you got to listen to what he says, right? Um, what was I going to ask you? So you're going to do a setup for us. You're going to do a clay setup, yeah? Yeah, uh, we're going to do a clay setup. I've got... We'll uh, get right into it. got clay powder on the go. We're also going to do a soil setup. We're going to set up a culture for orange springtails. And then, maybe an hour in, I've got a big surprise. If you're in the Springtail Facebook group, you know what's coming, but there's a big surprise coming for tonight. If you're not, we're good. The Stick first back. ISO Buddies exclusive. Uh, we've had a lot of exclusives, but it's your first. It's your first ISO Buddies exclusive. Yeah. And I want to talk about some of the cool stuff, or you're going to demonstrate some of the cool stuff on your site right now, right? Like aspirators, the, the water squirter bottle. That's going to be part of setting up a new orange springtail culture. I'll show you guys how to use aspirators, demonstrate uh, what went into put, making this product, all that. And that's for sucking baby boogers, right? Yeah, originally they're for sucking baby boogers. Bought them in bulk from China, <laughs> added the inline filter, some chiffon, called it a day. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> perfect. And much better than using that for ants. Um, you don't get formic acid in your in your lungs with that right yeah no thank you i don't use it for ants <laughs> i'm kind of addicted to it now it's like if you had a lemon pledge and you breathed it in a little bit you know you spray down your furniture and or your socks you know and, and run around on hardwood um i don't You're know if you guys ever did that your kids are all safe now so you get a hardwood floor kids or adults get a nice pair a thick pair of socks spray the floor down with lemon pledge let it set for a couple minutes and then you run and slide on it and you slide. Yeah, you're going to fall a lot, but it's okay because you kids these days, you have helmets and elbow pads and <laughs> bubble wrap pants and can't believe the kids today. I was, I was talking uh, earlier that you're a good host. You're proving it. You're an entertainer. I'm a good host? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's debatable, but these people Josh, keep coming back. So <laughs> that's something. Josh, of a lot more entertaining than me and yeah <laughs> i mean we'll see this is going to be your episode um before you get into this i'm going to take a bite of this sausage that i've been dreading for a week now so i should have got a snack on here. this is it guys um i mean it's a sausage make all the jokes about what it looks like you want it's a sausage so we're gonna i'm looking for like napkins i don't have any so i'm gonna smell like this probably oh my god the smell it smells like a pickle banged a hot dog. And this is what you got. Like, let me see if I can get it on there right. Okay, so this is what I'm going to eat. This is, <laughs> is that good positioning? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, get, uh, get your grandkid out of here. Um, Sensor. Sensor. Beetle, Beetle Guy loves your hair. You have better hair than me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I am Ryan Boy. I'm Ryan Boy on Instagram and Reddit. Okay. I'm the only Ryan out there, really. Never met another Ryan before. Okay. I took way too big a bite. <laughs> it's bothering The only thing bothering me about this is the spice. It's like really spicy. Otherwise, it is like a brining hot dog. I recommend these. If you're into spice. Otherwise, get the, <clears throat> get the big mama. That thing's too sus. I'm making his face, but I've never steered anybody wrong on these. I will always tell you if it's gross, but it's too hot. I don't think I'm going to eat much more of that if I eat any more of that. So there goes my fish food. All right. Oh, uh, you were you <clears throat> excited about me dipping my fingers into some clay and mixing it around. So you want to start with that? Yeah, I do. I want to start at the basics. So. My issue when I first started with isopods is everybody would just do their setup or talk about their setup and just say, like, don't make it too damp, but don't leave it too dry. But don't, and they wouldn't say, like, what the consistency was. So 
being a former chef, or I guess I'm still a chef, but uh, are you doing a are you doing an exam? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't gone through that recently. That's about how it is. Um, but yeah, so there was no like example. So I think if I'd have seen a video and have them do it live or whatever in the video, I'd be able to see the consistency that you're going for, um, everything that you're going for. I'd, I'd be able to see that visually and be able to be more successful. So that's for what sure. we're going to try to do. Okay, guys, for the audience, that's, I already talked to Ryan about this, but that's what we're going to do. So, and this is your clay mix, right? Yes. Uh, so as far as I know, the original recipe was developed by Doug Hollister for the dark frog hobby, calcium bearing clay. Uh, well, I took that recipe and tweaked it a little bit to make it more affordable while keeping the same uh, calcium bearing qualities as well as uh, consistent. <laughs> the, I will the, say it works. I will say it works because yeah. I use it. Um, ratio I've used it here. The ratio of sodium bentonite is what's most important. And so I, I didn't change that. Uh, Doug really did a good job figuring that out by himself back in the day. Good, All right. good. So so what I recommend, and I have it on my website, is two parts clay to one part water. And you may even like to do a little bit more clay to water. Uh, you don't want it to be so wet that there's standing water at the bottom of the culture. Okay. So... Uh, some people are like, you have to have standing water. No, misconception, misconception. All right, so I guess I'll start by putting a little bit of water in. Add some clay. This is the, this is the fingering that we've all been waiting for. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You like that? We just got adults. Uh, I don't like your face going with that motion. <laughs> that's the only part that's messing with me. <laughs> like... <laughs> Dip the sausage in the root beer. Uh, no, beetle guy, that's not the point. Um, I don't want to ruin that root beer. So, yeah, Victor knows. All right. I all right, so this takes a minute to get it all settled. This is the problem that I had when I was mixing it for the... Uh, I mixed it into that excavator clay for my uh, Huffman Segai. So they could kind of burrow and chew on it and all that. But I had an issue with it getting it all saturated it, it'll really start to clump up the sodium bentonite uh, really retains water if you have okay. too much sodium bentonite in the mix it's too slimy if you don't have enough sodium bentonite it's too thick and it won't have as good of water retention so sodium bentonite's where it's at doug is a genius for figuring that out but uh yeah she's about mixed here so it is like a peanut butter consistency. Yeah, probably. It, it, two parts clay, one part water is perfect. And it, it doesn't complicate. Okay. Uh, I sell these on my shop. They're really good quality lids with an excellent seal. I just noticed most people that sell clay cultures have pretty shady, uh, <laughs> pretty shady. Lids. Well, they're probably just using those like GFS deli cups. So. Just Hardly a good seal at all. So yeah. you just plop a plop a dollop down in there, spread it around the bottom. Anybody who walks a dog is familiar with this. So say what? Everyone who walks a dog is familiar with that motion. Your plops. Oh, okay. whatever you're saying. <laughs> and you want it nice and thick. Uh, the, the the thicker the clay, the longer the culture is going to end up lasting. And really poke at it, get it nice and textured, and wham, bam, that's a culture made right there. You slap a lid on it, and I don't use any ventilation. You never have to. So maybe the food powder might absorb a bit, wa bit water. Max that you're going to have to water it is like two drops of water every couple months, as long as it's a wow. sealed ventilation. So... <clears throat> Bam, these have a really good seal. So, yeah, you're not going to have to water that ever. I'm going to use that. And this will probably end up going to my local pet store whenever I start supplying them. <laughs> that's good. I feel like that's um, – uh, we have a – well, I guess they're not totally local to me, but like a half hour away. 
uh, Animal Island Pet Shop in Midlothian. They are awesome, and they have a good selection of springtails now. So I mean, by good selection, like four species. So um, for a pet shop, I feel like that's a lot. Um, yeah. Wally wants to know if you go up the sides. Do you go up the sides on there? Um, so back when I was still selling springtails, I did, but I ended up getting a lot of complaints because they'll go, they'll go up the sides and, um, they'll jump out when you open the culture and it just, just okay. them, maybe a little bit up the sides, but don't go all the way up and definitely don't want to get it on the lid. like Some people do. So, well, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Like my, my, real dumb. The plop it on the bottom, get it nice and textured. I don't remember the name of the company, but they sell really good springtail cultures, and that's the way that they do it. And I have no shame in copying them because that is definitely great. A eh? okay, um, Beetle Guy. Unfortunately, I can't promise we're gonna stop with the dirty jokes. Uh, we might, but we might not. It's kind of par for the course here. That's probably all we'll get done. I, I feel like that was it, but. Mm, yeah, it's probably going to be a recurring thing. Uh, uh, a comment about adding medical tape uh, as a ventilate, like as a ventilation cover, and yeah, that's a valid concern. I have killed some cultures due to overfeeding. That's that's the main issue with springtail culturing without ventilation is overfeeding them. The food will rot. The cultures will die from the gas. Um, okay. So I always try to feed what they can eat within three days, and that'll come back. That from happening. Okay, and you can <laughs> kind of go through it and see. Your yeah. mileage may vary on what's three days. Yeah, you'll you'll get a feel for it, and uh, if you're feeding your cultures every three days, they're going to be exploding for you. Good. Good. I need to get more on mine. Um, I have one colony of oranges, and the rest are just saturated in my bins of ice pods. I have thousands and thousands in my bins, but. Um, they're always good to have. You can't ever have too many springtails. They're just so useful. So yeah. um, like every every creature I have benefits from springtails. So like my cats, they're not a fan, but I sprinkle them on the cats. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder what happened to my one that dried out. Victor must have had ventilation or left it unsealed. How often are you opening it up when it's sealed? Because I've heard... Um, some shippers, I don't remember who it was, but they were like, oh, if you get them and they're not moving, just give them some oxygen in like an hour and they'll be fine. That can happen. So one time I had a culture, I thought I killed it because I opened it up. None of them are moving. Mm -hmm. And before I put it in the freezer, because you're going to want to freeze them for three days before you throw them away. Before I put it in the freezer, I checked it one more time. They're all back to life. So yeah, if you get lucky and you catch it early enough, yeah, the air will revive them. And yeah. Um, but when, so they go kind of dormant. They kind of go dormant then. Yeah. When it comes to ventilating for shipping, don't worry about it. You shouldn't be feeding your springtail shipping. They don't need it. They can survive for months without food. They'll eat their own poop if they need. It. I mean, I guess if I had to. No, I don't know. Nope. Uh, never mind. You you asked how long can a culture stay? A clay culture stay closed for? Well, yeah. So, like, like I know that they do go dormant when they don't have oxygen. But I also know they're really tiny and they don't use a lot of oxygen. So, how often are you opening and closing? Are you feeding every three days? Is that your thing? Yeah. During during feeding times, um, I've actually I've had. Let me go grab one for you. You guys can. Okay. I got because I've done it. Yeah, I've done it like once a week or something and it's been fine so um this is a, this is a 32 ounce master culture of fulsomia candida um and food got a little moldy i fed him too much Can oh you wow see? speaking of going up the sides oh uh, uh, yeah sure um but those eight ounce cultures they can jump right out oh no i know i know this is for you're giving them a lot of uh surface area to make, take advantage yeah. of that's good yeah uh, one of these can have five thousand springtails when it's fully loaded so uh, uh so as i was saying my fulsomia candida master cultures they ended up getting left alone for two months 
Okay. Not a single culture died. There's like over 30 of them over there. Not a single culture. That's cool. That's cool because that would be a big concern. So, they were um, eating their own poop and they don't use up enough oxygen. So over two months. Yeah. Can't argue with that, guys. That's the, the it's in the details. That is a wild. It's called a background when you get up. No brought zoom. Highly recommend okay. look into those. Have to check it out. Uh, Chiffon and the babies might leave the culture. Yeah, Chiffon might be too wide. Like the babies are basically microscopic, right? That is going to bring me towards something else I want to talk about. What? See how I do? See all these lead-ins I do? What do, you, what do you use to cover your ventilation holes? Um, 30 micron mesh. It's it's okay. I put it under a macro lens, couldn't even see the holes, but it's still just as breathable as chiffon. Yeah, um, I have that for my ants. I have like a, a 10 foot, it's like a 10 foot by two foot roll. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never use that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's the smallest mites. Well, maybe not the mites that are on your skin, those are real small, but like the smallest mites that you'll have to worry about, and the smallest springtails are not going to get through this stuff. And you just hot glue it over your ventilation holes. Yeah, and it works really, really well. Yeah. Uh, I use silicone, but I get you. Hot glue would work yeah. too. Yeah, silicone stinks. <laughs> Initially, but I feel like it, it leaves a better uh, oh. seal. I mean, I've got hot glue on my isopod bins over here, and that ain't going nowhere. I'm sure they're uh, fine. I was anonymous taught me hot glue. I was like, they want to just come off. He's like, man, I've got two-year-old cultures, and they're still... Hot glue is still as strong as the first day. All right, so Pods Anonymous, nice name drop there. Kyle, I hope you're watching later when you're done with your kids. Love you, Kyle. I think this might be a new snack I'm into. Like, <laughs> for real. I, I was so scared of this, and it's tasty. Those should, should start becoming a, a snack review as well. <laughs> That's part of the show. We do that. You weren't here for Dream Coke, Dream Flavored Coca Cola, but that was. I cannot recommend you keep that away from your face more. It's horrible. Mm. So, dirt setup. What are we looking at for dirt setup on these guys? All right. First, you want Springtails U.S. soil. Oh, for sure. I sell big gallon bags for $10. Best soil you'll ever find. It's great for isopods, too. And I'm actually working on an isopod blend that's going to add natural decomposed hardwood leaf litter and lime powder and possibly oyster shell but i might put oyster side for the customer to just it's a really good supplement and it's cheap so just put it in there it's not going to hurt anything true unless you're uh, keeping costs down but if you're going to give it away anyway just put it in there yeah uh that's just me talking that's no science whatsoever but it won't hurt the ice pods whatsoever um so oh yeah let's talk more about this dirt it's got let's do it yeah the main ingredient is mushroom compost oh it smells good it's got it's got a real sweet every dirt guy is like oh oh my god <laughs> us dirt guys are weird like that well uh, then when i get a good bag of dirt i'm like that's my smell test like if i'm gonna show and i'm checking your substrate i'll be like all right it's I like a, the consistency of it. It looks oh, very, yeah. uh, very Easy. uniform. Loose when it needs to be, and you can, you can pack it down. But it, 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 it it's a good consistency. I, ex, I experimented with, I experimented with eight ratios of my chosen ingredients, and okay. this, it, it was, it, it was a lot of love and dedication and passion and work that went into developing this mix. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Maybe I'll try substrate sometime on the show. Yeah. The uh spoonful. <laughs> oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. The uh the main ingredient is mushroom compost. Now okay. what is what was Spring Cell's favorite thing in the wild? Fungi. Mushroom compost is still loaded with uh all the mycelium and stuff from when they were farming the mushrooms. All right. And and then there is aged compost, just regular old compost, which is 
going to be loaded with bacteria, fungi, and decomposing matter. Um, and then here's one that kind of confused a few people. Cured manure compost. And they're like, manure? It doesn't... Yeah cured it's been hot composted for months it doesn't even it doesn't smell like manure anymore at that point it's not even manure at that point it's been broken down it just it just smells like dirt uh cured manure compost uh wood fines which is like shredded up wood uh just it's real fine it's literally called wood fines and that that fluffs it up that fluffs it up because all the mushroom compost, aged compost, and manure compost, that's a little too compact. So that you need some wood fines to fluff it up. Um, what else is in there? There's some peat. Gotta, gotta, do, gotta do peat. That's a classic. But it's not It's not like a majority. It's not like a majority peat, like a lot of people's mixes. And peat, peat isn't all that edible. If you, if you know anything about right. bog, that right. peat. Yeah. Um, and then there's aragonite sand, which is a little bit of calcium. And it's also just looks nice. It kind of looks like perlite, but it's just little white, little white sand that okay. makes it, and it adds a little bit of calcium to it, and some, uh, some like minerals, what have you. Quality reusable bag, guys. If you're not buying this soil, like okay, uh, Ziploc brand. I look at that name brand, name yeah. brand baggie. Look I at that, guys. Walmart brand, but that Walmart is a. Uh, quality for springtails us <laughs> never do it'll never do it's for your sandwiches not for your springtails um yeah i think that's awesome so are you doing a setup with those you said you're going to do a setup for some orange springtails hold up one second uh yeah yeah we can do a setup i might have to step away for a minute i'm very sorry you want to okay. keep these in for me? All right, cool, cool. I'll keep everybody occupied. So, guys, yeah, sorry there's about a billion that. springtails out there right now. What's your favorite? Huh? Huh? What's your favorite? Huh? Yeah, we had 29 for a second. That kind of intimidated me. I'm not used to this kind of audience. It's usually like three people. So I appreciate it. There are cups. There are tubs. What else have we got here? I'm just reading comments. More people out. No springtails. Sexy time. I feel like we need some. Yeah, no. No. I, I didn't realize they had like a little spring literally underneath them that just like, dink, and they're they're gone. Globulars are pretty cool, Scott. Globulars are pretty cool. I like, I just like how different they are. And the, they usually have a different like color vibe to them. Like you get them under that tiny tiny lens and they are all patterned up T miners from Artemis Artemis pubes pewed my bad I need my glasses on what Ooh. you know what oh, oh I'm back by the way sorry about that yeah we saw that we saw you come back <laughs> uh, someone, pretending you didn't someone just asked what food do you use uh, I think we'll talk about that later I have my own food blend that I developed that is by far the very best springtail food ever made so it's mostly rice flour right is that no that's <laughs> you bastard that's Josh's frogs <laughs> <laughs> uh senior Booker we're gonna get into we're, we're gonna get into it I think you hit that comment just as he was saying it um who's Jenny Vu is that a friend of yours Oh yeah, I know her. I just okay. Hey, today. Um, so many new faces. It's crazy. You always bring a big audience. We'll just yeah. have you on like six weeks in a row and really build the channel. So, um, we could we could talk about isopods. I have fire brats. We could talk about all sorts of stuff. Fire brats are dope. Uh, somebody had those on. I don't remember who it was that showed us fire brats. Might have been you last time. Um, I don't know. I don't remember who it was. Because it was like a secondary thing. They just kind of showed off. and I was Oh, like, I had got my fire bats from Michael Falaker. It was not him. I don't know who that is. But uh, yeah, no, they were cool. I like the, the concept of fire brats. Like there's, there's something in every little environment. There's something in every little biome that takes advantage of that biome. Um, so we were going to build 
uh, substrate setup because you said orange springtails do better on substrate. Yeah, yeah, orange springtails do best on substrate. Uh, you can culture them on clay, but they will breed, but not very fast. And you can, they're not thriving. They're not happy on clay. Some people even do them on charcoal, but that's even worse than clay. Uh, yeah. Salt is the way. And I really like, I don't want to spoil my ventilation system. I really like these Ziploc brand long, rect long rectangle containers. They have a really good seal. You can see these bumps here. They have a really good seal because they're made for freezer storage. Just like the bat, just like the bags that I use, they're made for freezer storage. Um, Perfect. And then I've glued and taped that 30 micron mesh over the ventilation. Now, I always put ventilation on one side to help facilitate a moisture gradient. And with an with a more arid species like the Entomobria and the Lepidosirtis, you're gonna want a larger vent, maybe about an inch by half an inch, and you'll let one side get dry. But uh, the orange spring tells won't really utilize a moisture gradient. They'll like it damp throughout, but they will appreciate a bit of ventilation. And ventilation also helps prevent any uh, accidents from gas buildup, killing your cultures. Okay. Now, so you've got you've got the correct tubs. They sell them in packs of two at Walmart. Only packs of two. It's a shame. I've I've made so many trips to Walmart because they only sell them in packs of two, and they only ever have like five packs on the shelves at once. Like. Who the hell is this guy? He comes every five days and wipes us out. <laughs> we got cases in the back just waiting to come out. So, but they have nobody to bring it no, out. That's the problem. Never do. I've, I've every time I'm asking the employees and they never have any in the back. But um, pretty soon, pretty soon, Walmart will just have self stocking, so you'll be able to stock the shelves by yourself too. That's the next step, I think. Are you are you messing with me? <laughs> kind of, but I'm gonna wait till that happens. They just like open the doors. You'll be able to go in the store and it'll just be cases of stuff on the floor and you just go through it and find what you need. Um, that's the next step for Walmart, I think. And, and the big the big box stores. I nice. hate self-checkout. I'll tell you that right now. Full disclosure. Um, but it would keep the store shelf the shelf stocked, I think. You'd get a bunch of old men angry and they would just stock it themselves. So, like me. So, this is the Ziploc bin. Ziploc bin. Ziploc long rectangle freezer bin. It's selling packs of two. You've got your ventilation ready, ready to go. And what you want to do, you don't necessarily have to buy off of me, but I mean, I'm not going to recommend anything else. No one's as good as my dirt. Uh, you're going to want to add about, say, this is substrate. Oranges in particular will really utilize all layers of the soil. They're burrowers. They'll really, okay. they'll really burrow down so some people even culture them very deep so hey that's what we'll do here today they culture them in what very deep tubs they'll culture them in very very deep soil because they'll really utilize okay. all layers of the soil and if you want to get an idea of the consistency of my mix nice and loose and yeah smoking. you can rub uh, that in your hair do whatever you want with that uh, yeah um so my my i'm gonna put my hair up so my existing, my existing orange spring till culture ain't doing too good. She's got, she's got fungus gnats. Oh God. So we're gonna, I've, I've been meaning to get a new culture going, but I wanted to save it for this. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that now. I like to see the comments. Because of the fungus gnats and I don't want them getting into this new culture. I may just be putting them into a quarantine cup. This is the same sort of cup that I do for shipping. It's a damp paper towel. I might okay. put them in a cup because the fungus gnats are going to be in the air, and I don't want them getting into the new culture. So we'll see how that goes with the gnats, but hopefully we can add them. All right. Um, so whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Bring that bin back. So how much moisture are you putting in there to uh, facilitate? No, no additional moisture needed. My soil is the perfect uh, dampness for you. And if you have a more arid species... Um, you might want to let the dry side dry out a little bit first. Okay. But, and I, I really pack these bags full. It's a full gallon. I can barely get them closed. And it, every bag is slightly over five pounds each. So five pounds of substrate for 10 bucks is a good deal. Guys, yeah. let alone 
whatever you think of the quality, that's a good deal. I'm just gonna throw yeah. that out there. Yeah, I, that that that's my whole that's my whole deal. High quality with for affordable pricing. I appreciate that deal. I appreciate that deal. Uh, I use soil people. Wait, so people always say stuff about it. Like it was a bad thing. I hate fungus gnats. I just got mos- mosquito bits. Um, you know, oh, you mosquito know. bits. Okay. And uh, what catchy automatic machine grade combo a, mosquito dunks. Oh, you guys want to know the real trick. So catchy's <clears> working <throat> at night, but during the day, you're gonna to want to put fly strips up above your lamp. That'll attract them. A light will attract them, and they'll be stuck to that. And then during nighttime, the light from the catchy will attract them. Um, yeah, my nostrils attract them too, so um, um, that's a big help. Maybe I'm going off on a tangent here, but speaking of fungus gnats, prevention is the key. Use sealed bins from the beginning, and you will never have to deal with a fungus gnat infestation. Mites. Use sealed bins with 30 micron mesh from the beginning. Line your shelves with diatomaceous earth powder. It's going to be a little messy, but line your shelves with diatomaceous earth powder so mites can't even get close to your cultures. Prevention is key. Once you have mites, they're not going anywhere. Once you have gnats, it's going to be a damn hassle to switch all your cultures to be clean and uh, free. So, And I even have... um. My shelves are organized. H stands for high level quarantine. I have three shelves. There's low level, medium level, and high level quarantine. And this just helps me keep an idea of what cultures open first. A pink sticker means that they have fungus gnats. So I know not to open up a clean culture after opening a fungus gnat culture. I always open my clean cultures first. And that way okay. not, that way they don't get any gnats. That's uh, super organized. All right. Good thing that most of my bugs died because I think by the time I'm selling again next year, um, I should be completely gnat free and hopefully mite free. Mites are really just in my isopod bins, but I want to be mite free too. Damn it! <laughs> Everyone tells me give up, but I don't want to give Good up. Good luck. Um, okay. I don't know anyone so, that's mite free with their isopods. N- nobody that I know that keeps isopods is mite free. So good luck. <clears throat> so, put tasers on your nose. Yeah. If you have gnats, you know how many you get up your nose. <laughs> I was going to say, you said the light attracts them, and I said my nostrils attract them, too. <laughs> so I was in a job interview. I was in a video interview last week, and uh, I'm talking to the guy, and all of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> like in the middle of the interview, because one was like, zoop. Um, so he, yeah, I had to explain the whole situation to him and pan my camera around to show him. So that was a half-hour conversation that had nothing to do with the job interview, and I haven't been called back, but he learned some stuff about ice pods. Um, so another thing before we get into this, how do you collect spring cells off of soil? A lot of people are intimidated by soil because it's, it, it feels like it's going to be a mess. Like you're going to have to scoop the soil and everything. And, and that's how I did it at first. This is the exact setup I used to use for even collecting wild spring tails, a paintbrush and a deep spoon. But scientists figured it out years ago entomology aspirators and i make my own they have a chiffon as a preliminary filter so no springtails get sucked up the tube and then there's an inline filter which uh, traps small particles that get past the chiffon and i sell them with replacement chiffon pieces and i make these myself i swear by them i wear gloves while i do it if <laughs> and a mask so they, should, they ought to be clean um and yeah so what so what you'll do is You'll put the filtered end into your mouth, and you're going to aim the non-filtered end. Here, I got some dirt on the table. Let's scoot it my way. Some dirt fell on the table. I'll demonstrate for you guys. So, you just suck it, and they all get stuck in the cup. Okay. Now, you see? It's all in the collection cup, and it's not going to go up the tube because they're chiffon. Any part, small particles will get stuck by the inline filter. I need to get the inline filter on mine. I have like a professional grade one that I'm into. Here, here it is. Here it is right here. And yet, yeah, any ants. So these this ones, is mine. And it just has oh, a mesh. I'm yeah. going to jam some chiffon up there because it just has like a screen mesh yeah, I've on seen. this tube. And it's kind of jacked up. So I get a lot of dirt 
in my lungs. I get I get that formic yep. acid. <clears throat> I feel like the chiffon would block the formic acid a lot too. But uh, these these cups that I, these aspirins that I've got, this soft lid, and then the spring. If you're sucking spring tails and not little pieces of dirt, you just dump them right out. Perfect. Beautiful. Dump them right in your collection container. So now, let us demonstrate with some orange, everyone's favorite, some orange spring tails. Aftec thinks that's the smallest bong. All right. Can you guys see them? We got a good amount of oranges in there. Yeah, actually, yeah. It, you see how easy it is? And That's the, surprising. You see how easy it is? Soil cultures don't have to be intimidating. Just get you an aspirator. You can make them. You can buy them. I think everyone should make one at some point because it's, it's a fun experience. But, you know, let's suck up some more. I like to have uh, 20 plus for starting a new culture. So let's do that. Just get them all out of there, man. Let's just sit here while you get everyone out of there. So it seems like you're getting like a hookah kind of a suction on there. Just a little. They, uh, not a big deal. They don't like the light, so they're all going underground, but there should be enough. I put out some soil a few hours or some springtail food a few hours ago to draw them to the surface for me. Okay. Smart. Some bait. Yeah. Do you want to borrow some pickled sausage? Not sure they'll like that. I mean, they might. They might not not like it. Should I see if the ants eat it, you guys? People give them shrimp. Should I put it down for the ants? I feel like giving them shrimp, unless it's just a powder form, is kind of not smart. All right, we're going to see if the ants eat the pickled sausage. We've got enough here. We've got enough. Get out of here. And I, I am going to put them in a quarantine cup because there are gnats in the air. Okay. Um, but yeah, so what you would normally do is just dump them straight into their new culture. Or if you're out in the wild collecting, you're going to want to have some collection cups. They could either be clay or paper towel. So yeah, I'm just going to put them in here. And then tomorrow morning when all the fungus nets are not in the air anymore. Okay. And make and sure they're not in your cup. Yeah. They ought not be. Okay. Yeah. They it's ought not be. I'm surprised your camera's picking those up. Usually we have a problem. Like, I mean, it's not great, but you can definitely see the orange. That's awesome. Bright orange and four to five millimeters in size. So, all right. And that's that's the soil culture demonstration that I was so excited to do for you. I mean, I appreciate it. And the demonstration of the, uh, the aspirator. So I like to see all these products that you're coming out with on your um, on your page. So guys, the <clears throat> seriously, the ice pot or ice pot spring tails, us. <laughs> We're talking about ice pots the last three weeks online with so many people. Um, spring tails us has pretty much, I can verify this. Everything you need is a one-stop shop for spring tails and hypothetically for yeah. ice pots. Like there's pretty much everything. I'll start would... some stuff soon. Just need to find time to put a bunch together. Okay. What shampoo do you recommend? <laughs> I have dandruff, so I use a dandruff shampoo. <laughs> Head and shoulders is life. I'll tell you right now. I'm sad they like stopped teaming up with Old Spice because they had I, these like Old Spice scented Head and Shoulders, and uh, that's my jam right there. Ever since they had that one guy on there, that was like, I smell like your man could smell like. Um, I wash my hair every three days. Use shampoo and conditioner you'll have, lock. you'll have curtains or drapes like mine as you called them earlier perfect the drapes let's see what do we got you want that species oranges are huge right now have you have orange springtails i mean they're not are they are they selling for a lot right now i don't even know like for springtails they are but back in the day they were but now they're back in the day they like when they first came into the country like four dollars a springtail when i was on the game early summer, two dollars a springtail, and now I'm seeing them around one fifty or one dollar a springtail. A dollar for a springtail, but they're so prolific. Like in no time, you'll have. They're becoming so widespread that they'll probably go down to fifty cents. Like I think fifty cents should be standard for most. Of those. Well, and in no time, if you buy 
20. For my more time, you're going to have a thousand. For my more piece that I introduced to the hobby myself, I was doing a, a 30 count for $20. I think that that is a pretty fair pricing. Personal. That's super fair. I feel like that's super fair. Because there are guys at shows selling, you know, a cup of your standard spring tails for 15, 20 bucks, you know, on some random yeah. forest dirt. So dollars for a hundred of the standard spring tails. So <laughs> right, right. And that's just collection fee, really. That's not really anything. Yeah, not pause pine tar soap. Gross. Shipping to Canada. Uh you could message me on Facebook. I'm Ryan Pavey, uh Spring Tales US. I could get you a quote for shipping. I won't ship live animals out of the country but i can ship supplies i can get you a quote um i don't have international shipping set up on the website yet springtails.us is the website but message Check me it out guys we'll have the the link in the down there part after the show i'm not good at putting that in there in the beginning i'm working on it we're, we're expanding into or i'm expanding into isopods to uh i have a very tiny little isopod supply section let me show you the one product <clears throat> it's like one box the one product that I have for sale is three three pound bags of oyster shell in my isopod section, and like squeeze bottles. But <laughs> oh, squeeze bottles, are dope. Um, wait, Wally has somebody who sells zero springtails for fifteen dollars. Is it me? It's just a cup. A fifteen dollar cup. That seems exorbitant. That must be a species I'm not familiar with. Now, um, I think we were talking about globulars last time. How are your globulars doing? Uh, my globulars are doing fine. They're, I have thousands of them right now, and they're in one okay. soil. They are they're a soil dwelling species, so they actually live on this live and breed on my springtail soil without any additional feeding needed. Um, but they're too tiny to show on camera. They look kind of yeah. like mites that jump <laughs> they're white they look uh I, I i had some larger some large bright yellow species of globular breeding but um when springtails us took a little took a little personal hit yeah yeah that happens i mean yeah that happens. everyone's wondering where i'm at and why i'm not selling springtails right now is just stuff happened that's all you need to know <laughs> <laughs> life that's a, that's the uh one of the big life. hits for uh the small businessman is when your life takes a weird turn like it really affects your business so i've seen it happen to just about everybody in the business you just have to put it on pause you know and then keep it going but prioritize <clears throat> now i'm not spending 30 plus hours a week prepping packing and shipping orders i can focus on expanding my species expanding my product line and doing things the right way working on my website like i there's a silver lining i'm gonna be great I'm, I'll, I'll choose to be grateful good good um what are we talking about here what squeeze bottles are the best no i think that's super awesome what um, squeeze best yeah. my bottles go to springtails.us <laughs> forward slash shop in the all supplies section, you'll find some 500 milliliter squeeze bottles. Uh, let's talk squeeze bottles. For springtail culturing in specific, they're way better than squirt bottles. Squirt bottles will irritate the springtails. The moisture droplets will get all stuck to them. You might even have casualties. Sque I'm just gonna get my table wet. Squeeze bottles are a nice, gentle stream that so you can cool. spray right into your wet end. And, and it's even good for iso, you might, I need to get. I need to start carrying one thousand milliliter ones because if you have a lot of isopod bins, a five hundred milliliter will run out quick. But it's great for watering your sphagnum moss too. Squeeze bottles are the way. Uh, I squirt. would never use that for my isopod bins. I'm just gonna throw that out there. No offense. I'm not trying to cost you sales, but it's a big one gallon sprayer, two gallon sprayer oh. for me. Bro, <laughs> what is your boy Stella Springies talking about? Or it might be your girl. Um, which had a really nice orange springtail in there. Leak the merch collab. Are you doing a merch collaboration? Uh, oh yeah, we're we're gonna do a merch collaboration. We're gonna have my his logo is an orange springtail. Yeah. My logo is the red globular springtail. We're gonna have them feeding on a mushroom, maybe with some hearts swirling around them to show that 
We are Springtail Companies United. I really, I really support that guy. He's a great guy. If you need live Springtails, go to him. I don't have any right now. If you need live Springtails, gotcha. All right, man. Nice. Oh, Wally says, yes, Ryan, do you. Perfect. Perfect. See, I love these, like, Arthur Prod and whatever Springtails are groups. That <laughs> what, what family are they in? What family are Springtails in? Are they their own thing? Oh, are they yeah. arthropods? They're arthropods. Uh, they're closely related to insects, but they're not insects. They are in their own class. So insects are class insecta. Springtails yeah. are class columbola. And there's four orders of springtails within that. There's the pedieromorpha, the symphipleona, which are the globulars. And then there's the entomobryomorpha, which are the elongates. And then there's another one which is more niche it's it's a it's an order of springtails that are, look like globulars but they aren't globulars and they're they're the smallest species of springtails like 0.1 millimeter size so who has time to remember the, their name they're too <laughs> they're too I mean, small the odds the odds that we're all keeping them right now are pretty high yeah you never know <laughs> you're like the sand is moving what's going on here uh how do you see and photograph your springtails, Ryan? How do you get such nice photographs, Ryan? <laughs> How do you do well, it? Do you freeze them first? I got, no. I've for over two years now. I have been using this Apexel 12 by 24x macro clip-on lens, and I have an order of them that is going to be arriving at my door. Hopefully, within a week or two, they'll be on springtails.us shop. You can get them on Amazon if you need to, if you need them quick. Unless you want to support small business and wait a little bit. Just wait a little bit, guys. You don't need it right now. Get better yeah. with your macro on your camera and then add that thing to it. Yeah, you you you, you, you clip it onto your phone camera. Yeah. And that's true. And it's got it can either be 12x, which is better for photographing uh, isopods, or you can screw on the 24x lens. And this is this is what it looks like. It comes in this nice package with like foam insert and it has a little microfiber cloth and this is what it looks like and it just it just clips onto your phone here you can unscrew the uh, unscrew the lenses take them apart the, di the, the dish here is the focal length so if you press the dish up against if you press the dish up against what you're wanting to photograph that's the focal length so it has a really close focal length which makes it a little hard to work with but with some practice it's great you can i've gotten some phenomenal photos of the de the details of the pupils uh, it's really hard to get volunteers for that they don't like having a lens pressed up against their eyeball but you can get like like professional looking photos of the crazy structures of the eyeball it's fascinating I highly recommend you guys try it out on a willing volunteer that's cool that's cool i bought this microscope microscope camera that is a uh it is a piece of crap so don't buy those guys if you see them yeah they're, they're the, garbage the microscope cameras can be got to get lucky and get a good one but they're if yeah don't buy like the 40 dollar one because it's it's trash or anything even like yeah. it. in the 40 dollar range just move I have off, a save your money 20 dollar one and that thing is great it's it's on par with my clip lens but even easier to use probably Better well, but you'll have to post that link somewhere. Um, can most multiple species cohabitate? That's a great I question. Mean, initially, how to actually, um, uh, so look, look at your forest floor, or even your backyard ecosystems. There's a dozen or even dozens of species all cohabitating, and springtails are interesting in that they can fill different niches. So you'll be, you'll look. In the soil, there will be like Pseudocinella, uh, Arhopolites, stuff like that. Little tiny white, they've lost their pigment, they've evolved to lose their pigment, soil dwelling. Then you'll have the leaf litter dwelling ones. Like in my area, the Pogonognathalus dubius, the giant silver bullets, aka the largest springtails currently in the hobby, they're leaf litter, they're very common leaf litter springtails. And then you'll look a little bit higher in the arid environments, like uh, on the bark of trees or the bark of fallen trees, under the bark of fallen trees, you'll find 
uh, more arid adapted springtails. So springtails each have a different niche. Now, for my isopod bins, this is something that I can't wait to put out on the market someday. It's going to take a lot more research and development. But um, so you might notice if you're using silver springtails or tropical pinks, like everyone else uses, like like most people recommend, I use them myself too. They just grow into such huge populations and they'll eat the isopod food before the isopods can get to it. And they just cover everybody. They, they might even be irritating your isopods. Well, what if you have every niche within the bin filled by a different species? So you have a moisture loving, soil loving species filling that niche. You have an arid species on your dry side and you have like an intermediate like leaf litter type of species and the filling like the the ground level stuff on the damp side and and in my experience that it's <clears throat> the system you, you can really benefit from creating ecosystems within your bins i'm always a fan of that i don't know if i would do it in my breeding bins but i think that that's a cool uh, yeah that's a cool I, display or a cool setup if i can get it to a point where it's like you can buy a pack and it's like three species like all in their own little cup and you just dump them all in That'd be that'd be awesome. That's 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 a gold mine for sure. That's a uh, that's a bioactive dream come true right there. So get on that. I feel like market that is bioactive. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what are the species of springtails that love wood? I have them in my millipede enclosures, but forgot the name of the species. Um, that's a hard question to answer because there's many species. <laughs> I wanted to see how you would answer that. So yeah. So. They might be Lepidocirtus, they might be Entomobria, they might be Homidia, uh, they might be a Hypogastrua species, they really could be anything. Just, you know, we, we, we text, just, send, just try to get me the best picture you can and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do my best to identify that for you. I wanted to field this one to see if I'm smart, but um, I think Jedi Monkey that they'll eat that punky wood, the same kind of wood that you're getting for your... Uh, millipedes but they're eating it for the fungus and not necessarily yeah. what from what i understand ice pods can't break down <clears throat> cellulose so I, I, um already on that topic either but that that is kind of what i've heard that it, when you get that nice naturally decomposed hardwood it's the fungus yeah yeah i'm gonna be having a lot of that soon um i just found a seven foot tall or seven foot long log to put in a ver uh, a new paludarium for the ants which oh my god you guys got to see this all right so i gave them that sausage the pickled sausage oh Let's see if i get the light on this where's the light here we go look at this feeding response right here oh wow she are was these, losing her mind tell me about what's that are these your carpenter ants that you were telling me about <laughs> yeah yeah they are uh She's due for an upgrade. So we're going to make, we're building a 125. That's why I want to get with you about those springtails. Uh, I'm building a 125 into a paludarium. So the bottom, like eight inches, is going to be a fish tank and newts. And then a couple inches above that is going to be a platform. And then there's going to be a paludarium, like the ants are going to be up there. So I have a seven foot log that I have to cut down. Um, and then I have branches to go on that. But it's going to be open top, just like this. And then they'll be attached to the, uh, the the canopy where's it at there we go oh that is awesome the canopy is going to be attached to that as well so it'll be right here when it's all done it'll be just to my left where this tank is now so i'll have even less room to to move in here um but i think it'll be totally worth it i don't but i want it to be as bioactive as possible <clears throat> when we were on the phone earlier we ended up talking way too much about spirituality and consciousness i don't think i took <laughs> i did. don't it, oh, we were talking about God, like, <laughs> uh, but I don't think I got to tell you about, I, I have a super pastel ball python. Her name is Rio. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's living in like a 50 gallon tank now, most of her life. And uh, within the next few months, I'd love to build her a PVC enclosure that is six feet tall, uh, six feet or six feet wide and three feet deep. And there's going to be, be some, awesome. there'll be a subterranean cave system. There will be, well, not not so much a cave system because we're going to need to be able to access it to clean it. Um, the subterranean hides because in the wild, you know, that's what ball pythons do. 
is they'll go into like rodent hides and stuff. And then yeah. there will there'll be hides on the surface level with like a heat hide with a uh, with a heat pad, whatever it's called. And, and with and then like on the hot side, there will also be a heat lamp. And then there'll be and it's six feet, so I can get an excellent temperature gradient. And there'll be a cool side with some hides over there. Let me know when you're building that. I have some ideas. Yeah, I'd love to. I have some it. ideas already for how that would work. The cave system, at least yeah. the cave system, I have ideas in my head right away um, how that would work. And then, <clears throat> wild, they've even been documented uh, like being arboreal. Most people think of them; uh, they dwell underground, but they've been shown to be arboreal, and they'll they'll even hunt birds and stuff up in trees. So it's being oh, six cool. feet tall and. And even it, like she loves to climb, like she is the coolest freaking snake. When I take her out, she is so exploratory. So there'll be like, I'm hoping I can get like a big sort of plant, but if not, I'll just have like big pieces of wood for her to yeah. climb on. I mean, get oh. big mossy pieces of wood. That sounds great. That I don't know a lot of plants that'll support a, a snake that big. I don't, um, yeah, I I don't know if plants are going to be possible. Maybe on the Maybe on the cold side, because it will be six feet wide. So on the cold side, I might be able to get away with, like, some more moisture-loving plants. But on the hot side, it'll probably have to be, like, air plants. So. Yeah, I mean, you could do some plants, but I would just focus on, like, wood. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. big pieces of wood. That's me. That's me. Seal them. Make sure they're nice and sealed. Um, no, that's really cool. And you could do a lot of bioactivity with that. Six by six. Wait, six loach... By Loach has an eight by eight by ten for Asian water monitor. Uh, Always nice set up. Monitor man, that's a nice setup. Those things are so cool. That's badass. Uh, I'm Mr. Olson substitute. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, what else were we gonna do? You had some kind of reveal. You said it an hour in, and oh, yeah. we're an hour in. So let's have it, bud. All right, you guys. Get ready, see. guys. Got to I am one of two people with this species in culture. I got them from my good friend, Marino Gray. He is the original collector of them in Florida. U.S. native orange springtails. And they breed even faster than the other springtails in the hobby. And they're U.S. native, which is so much better in my opinion. So there's not much to show you. They're little tiny springtails, but I'm so excited about these guys. This is the culture that he sent me. They are booming. They, I, I have to feed them every day. I can't believe it. But hopefully, I put out some food for them. They ought to have swarm, swarmed it by now. Oh, looks like we lost. Uh, looks like we lost Josh. Well, they haven't even swarmed it yet. They haven't found it yet. But yeah, they're they're in here. There's a, there's a ton of them. They breed really fast. Oh, you're back. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I was glad you were talking about something because yeah, was, yeah, I didn't have to entertain them. That's what I'm gonna talk about. But yeah, U.S. native orange springtails. It's gonna be huge. So excited about that. That's awesome. We're back up to four dollars a springtail, guys. We're back up. And so much safer too, because if if a newbie gets their hands on these and releases them into the environment, at least they're U.S. native. Uh, the species, the species is Neonura groe. Um, and this is a rather cryptic species. Let me put them back on my shelf. They like put in oh. fake vampire teeth. And oh, I, bleh, bleh. I consult with the expert Franz Johnsons. He is the creator of columbola.org and the number one springtail, like he, the number one columbologist. Like he is the expert. And it also turns out that he's a really nice guy who is down to help people identify things and help people learn. Um, so I presented pictures to him and he identified them and it turns out they're a really cryptic species in that there's only four scientific papers written about them and three out of the four are about the same specimens. So they've only been collected by scientists twice and they're unlike any other species in the genus near Nera. So it turns out they might even be misplaced. They might not actually belong in that genus. So before I ever bring them to market, I, I've got a couple PhDs who are interested in them. So I'm going to get cultures out to the real experts and see see what they think. Um, see if that identity, see if the Nia Nira Groe is even a correct identification. 
That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, really excited about this. Like, I worry about that in this hobby more than isopods because isopods are at least visible. Um, like, trying to discern what species and all of that subspecies uh, springtail is has to be daunting. But it sounds like you know a couple guys, whereas like isopods is oh, like it, four dudes worldwide that do this. Uh, at least Springtails has fronds, and he is like so passionate. He has records of every species that gets presented to them, like of where they're from, where they've been, like who has them, what countries. Like he's based in Belgium. He's a he's a Belgium. I don't know. He's a Belsh, whatever the hell the Belgian people are called. A Belgian. He's a Belgian. Yeah. The Belgians. Yeah, he's a Belgian. Uh, yeah, or a waffle. I think they're called waffles. I'm that's just... a weird when you say it too many times. Belgian. Yeah, it's just waffles. Yeah, waffles. Yeah, yeah. He's a waffle. Um, he's the man. He's the man, and, and we're we're blessed to have him. See, I uh, need to meet more people. Ooh, sounds like you might be freezing and lagging out here. He's a belch. I'm connected. Oh. I have a good connection. There we Am go. I back? Yeah, you're. Oh. All right. Are you back? Okay, you're you're frozen. I can hear you. Good. A lot of fun. Let's see. As long as you can hear me. It says I have a good connection, so I don't know. Can you hear me now? Keep talking yeah, about can, PhDs. I can hear you. You're not uh you're not frozen anymore either. You're a little blurry, but you're just here. keep a little blurry, that makes sense. I'm normal I'm part Bigfoot, so I'm always a little blurry on camera. So that works out. No, come on, that was really funny. I must be frozen. No? Keep talking. Oh, keep talking. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm reading comments. Uh uh, Wally asked a really good question. You see it? Okay. Uh, yes, I do. I saw him say, catch me after the show for the freezing issue. Uh, do you know if permits are needed to ship springtails? Do now, you? Now, this is a weird subject. Um, I believe technically, yes. I've talked to Carlos Blanco. Like, if you've gone through the permit process, you know that he's the man. And, uh, it's he he told me that you can get permits for Fulsomia candida, the most common ones, but there's no process in place for getting permits for the rest of the species. But you really should get permits, but there's no process in place. So so in the meantime, while I'm building on my stock, uh, probably within a week here, I'm gonna start negotiating with him because columbola.org the website created by franz i told you he tracks where these spring cells are at in the world he has interactive he has an interactive map that shows the locality of uh, all the spring tail species so i can i can prove with scientific evidence that these species that i have are already native to the entire continent so wow. hopefully, hopefully i can work on getting a process put in place it's a pretty daunting task because I'm a 19 year old newbie who just got into this hop in December, um, like full blown, like talking to people and like, so it's a pretty daunting task, but I, I hope that I can help put that process in place. And, and me and Wally have talked and, and if, if, if it goes good, I'd love to go on his show and talk about it because Wally has seemed to be the real authority on uh, the springtail permit process or the, the USDA permit process. Yeah, he's well versed. He is well versed in the permit situation. Um, I'm gonna have to get this hot dog thing out of here. Soon. Oh, Michael, hi, buddy. Missed you. We, we're Miss gonna you? talk. The aquatics. He's my friend. I got the fire okay. from. Ah, yeah. see, you had to say fire brats again. So, Beetle guy, I think we're gonna do an episode of fire brats. So they seem to be pretty popular. Yeah, there's really um, nothing like them. So. Um, I think it's definitely worthwhile doing that as an episode by itself. So we'll get to that. Um, all right. I got to get these guys off of here. Oh, I'm getting attacked. <laughs> I don't want them taking this back to the babies. So we're going to get them off of here. 
Sorry, guys. No more hot dog for you. Yeah, guys. This time, this time around, I'm actually able to ow, ow, ow. have a tablet so I can read your comments as they come in. So, See? Technology. Technology these right, days. I think I got them. I think I got them. Oh, yeah. There's an escape uh, Wally just said that the USDA process has changed, and yes, it is. It's confusing, uh, and it seems that it's not mobile compatible. So you're gonna have to do it on a or a desktop now. And you have. Uh, I heard from. I saw a comment from Pet Peds and Pods that Carlos is on break until November second. So. Oh yeah, so my negotiations probably won't be able to begin until November second. But yeah, and hopefully, I we need to get this permit situation figured out once and for all. It's it's so hit or miss. Like for some people, the permits will get approved, and for other people, it won't. So the groundwork needs to be laid, and and the standards in the hobby need to be set. The gold standards need to be set, or, or the hobby is never going to grow to the potential that it that it has yeah. if no has definitive answers on what the hell is going on. Well, I feel like not just the hobby is in jeopardy. It's it's uh, you know these citizen science guys like yourself that are bringing these species to the attention of the experts. You know the PhD guys. Yeah. Um, and I don't want you or anybody else in the hobbies that you're in to be daunted by being like I'm a 19 year old kid doing this, um, or setting this up. There are I gotta set you up with some of the guys I know in the ants community. They are huge around. Oh, you're you're freezing and breaking up here. Ah, bad timing too. Right when you're in the middle of an interesting discussion. I know, right? Is that better? <laughs> Am I back? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Okay. You're back. So yeah, I've got to hook you up with some of the ant guys that I know. So these kids are, um, I call them kids in the best possible way, but they are into the ants so much, and they're so into uh, cat cataloging and discovering and placing GPS. Oh, Wally, uh, Josh disappeared, but I'll go on what he says. Citizen science for this stuff is very important. You need to document where you collect these things. iNaturalist is perfect for that. You can use the app and zoom in on the map. I I actually document every single springtail that I collect on iNaturalist. I, I was talking in your place. A bit Thanks, buddy. You, uh, um. Okay. Yeah, these guys are connected with entomologists uh, at universities, and each one kind of has their own guy. But those guys all collaborate. So they're all, not, they're not even out of high school, and they're all super involved in the, the science aspect of the hobby. So they're looking at it more like a scientist than a hobbyist. That is um, very important. And uh, I've, uh, oh, hold on. After his internet is better than mine, that's all. I really need to run this cable, figure out a, a decent way to run a cable down here from the uh, the box that I have the cable. I just need to run it uh, through the floor, essentially. So see if I can get that done. Um, I got interrupted by an unwelcome visitor. Um, <laughs> no privacy when you're a 19 year old and you still live with your parents. Ghosts, roommates, they're your roommates. My room, my 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 fifty year old roommate. <laughs> naturally, naturally. Um, as I was saying, citizen science. I've been. I mentioned. Well, Franz is a weird guy. Uh, he's from Belgium. I've never talked to him in besides emails and stuff. So, but okay. I tried about uh, my citizen science dreams with Spring Tales US is to to have the hobby meet the science. Now, springtails are a fascinating science in that you can use them as a biometric indicator for soil health, for environmental health. So if if all these new hobbyists coming coming in are collecting these springtails and they're documenting exactly the environment that they were collected from and GPS coordinates with iNaturalist, and they're keeping track of these things. It can be really useful for science. And they're like like the orange spring tells that my friend sent me, the U.S. native oranges. They're a cryptic species that science needs more research on. And they it might it might have been decades away, but here's us citizen scientists getting them into culture, and we can yeah. get them to real scientists and advance and advance the real sciences. 
I feel like the lines are blurring since uh, I want to say the last decade. I'm sure it's been before that, but the last decade, the lines between like accredited scientists and the hobbyists slash citizen scientists are really blurred because a lot of the information is accessible to me and you. We could access the same information that these accredited guys have access to. We just have to ask special permission to get it. Uh, a lot of the papers that they have. So, unfortunately, um, papers are hard to read, but if you're interested in anything related, go to colinola.org and you can research any species. It's, 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 it's a little hard to navigate. He made the website in the night and he hasn't really updated it. He's an old guy. But if you get used to it, ugh, it's such a fascinating resource. Yeah. And if you're, yeah. And, and I've had many pictures already uploaded there. Um, if you get a good picture of a good species that hasn't been photographed yet, you're going to, you're going to end up on columbola.org and you could be found on Google and help actual real scientists. So spring cells, especially there's huge potential to advance the science through the hobbies. I'm torn in that whole concept, like between real si real hob or real scientists and, whoever else, like, I don't want to discredit the dedication that they put into it and their education and everything. But at, at some level, like not everybody can afford that. Like, people can do the homework and they can't afford that. Like, I don't know, like you're not loaded, but you're getting a lot of the information that these other guys have. Are you writing it down? Yeah, someone asked, what's the website? It is columbola.org. Columbola is the scientific name of Springtails. Check it out, message, guys. Uh, message that to me. I'll put it in the down there part as well okay. in the description. So um, we'll be able to have that that resource for everybody. Um, I think that's awesome. I just think that's awesome. You have some of these like technically undescribed species that are not even technically. They're undescribed. An uh, American orange springtail. I found, so, I found a species that is from the Asian, my, my logo, that red globular. I've only yeah, yeah. I've only ever found one. Uh, Franz told me they're, they're a tropical species that is either of Asian or South American origin. I'm in rural Illinois surrounded by cornfields and I found it in my forest. And, and, and the, the spread of that species may have never been known without my citizen science commitment. Well, and I feel like a lot of those things can be brought in with um, produce, imported plants, uh, uh, when I worked oh. in retail, we would chase lizards all summer because these little anoles or whatever would come in on the plants, um, and we'd just be chasing them around the store. Buddha, Buddha bugs. Uh, my, my brain's a little frazzled. Buddha bugs is a real cool guy, Nicholas O'Connor. Uh, he has connections with a really large greenhouse in Texas, and he has been. Uh, he sent me photographs of this incredible species that came out of there, and. And yeah, it's through plants, the plant soil, there's species from all over the world being brought to these nurseries. And then next thing you know, they're going into people's yards. So so that's that's probably how they ended up in the local forest is through exotic plant soil or something of the, on those lines. That's my guess, because if they're already in the soil and they're just putting it in pots or whatever, then there you go. Or even um, you hear about imports on animals in... Uh, bags of like peat moss or topsoil that you can get that they get um little travelers little hitchhikers so i mean that's how we oh. have worms in america is from the ballast of boats right you want to know something crazy oh you lagged out um well i'll say it anyways i got some ace brand topsoil and i found a ton of fulsomia candida people use that stuff in their yards around here you know what that means there's fulsomia candida in the wild here and and funny enough, I'm the first person on iNaturalist to document Fulsomia candida actually living in the wild in in the U.S. And well, technically, I found them in topsoil, but we can assume that they're living in the wild here because people use that topsoil in their in their yards and stuff. And so, yeah, the springtails really come in on everything. If you're getting some exotic plants, dig through dig through it, and maybe you'll find something crazy. Josh still isn't back. Um, oh, now he's really gone. Oh, now he's back. Okay, hi. <laughs> well, I think you just twiddle your thumbs the whole time I'm gone. Guys, when I freeze, you're supposed to ask a bunch of questions. No, no, I talked. Uh, you, good, you, good, you know, good. 
I'm not going to say it again, but you'll see. Snarf, I'm pretty sure that we have earthworms because of, or most species of earthworms are here because of the ballast of boats. I know we have zebra mussels because of boats, but this is like when they used to stuff the bottom of boats with dirt and then they would replace it essentially because it would get moldy and crappy in the bottom of the boat. Um, beware the ace topsoil. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've heard the ace topsoil will have like hitchhikers or like trace amounts of insecticides. That, what I was talking about was my local ace brand topsoil. I found Fulsomia candy. And people put that in the yards around here. So that means that there's temperate white springtails living in Peru, Illinois. <laughs> Which means they're probably living all over America. Oh, yeah. Ace topsoil. But that's something like, how do you get rid of them? If they can live that long without oxygen, they can survive all kinds of conditions. Yeah. Um, you don't want to just dry out all your topsoil because that's going to destroy nutrients your plants need. So it's it's really tough. That's really tough, I think, to get rid of, um, you know, near microscopic organisms that are there by the millions. Yeah. Um, well, to fill the gap here, I think it's time to plug another product. <laughs> Yeah, take over. <laughs> For all you charcoal lovers out there, we got gallons of charcoal packed to the brim, measured in at 1.5 pounds or above at a minimum $5. Don't pay $17 for charcoal from Amazon from an unnamed company that none of us like. Go to Springtails US, $5 for a gallon. All right, and that concludes product plug for this 30 minute section. Well, let me go with a devil's advocate. I thought you were against charcoal, so carry on. All right. I'm glad that you're questioning me here. I don't use charcoal personally, but uh, I've seen people that s were refused to switch to clay or soil because charcoal has worked for them for years. So why not carry it? And and I've seen recent, and this this got me, it honestly got me mad. Someone ordered that $17 gallon bag of charcoal from Amazon, that unnamed company that none of us like. And why are people overpaying for this stuff? So, yeah, I'll carry it for $5 for a reasonable price. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and here's another thing. If you guys want to buy charcoal for your thing, here's some advice from myself that I got from the uh, skipper himself, Wally Curran. Um of Supreme Gecko, Supreme Ice Pod. You may have heard of him. I don't know. Maybe. Um, he's Small been around for a little while. Yeah, he's kind of new. But yeah. um, so I would, I still do it. I, I smash up that, like, the big bulk charcoal that you get, you know, the big pieces. Um, smash those up. Wally's advice is just run over the bag with your car a couple times. Nice. That one's got Red Bull in it. You guys didn't know that. Ran out. We're converting the. It's beautiful. Oh, I couldn't do that because I don't know how long the water's been in mine. Um, I had algae grown in one of mine. I had to let. I, I let the algae grow. I figure, hey, it's a little extra food for my spring tails. <laughs> well, not for me. Not for my consumption or my paints. I use it for my painting. Oh, okay. um, but anyway, the charcoal, I mix it into my soil. It's in my substrate mix. So there's chunks of it. And that does two things. It kind of takes out some of the toxins that might be in the soil or some of the like ammonia. Um, and it will also like, I, I think it's like very little that it does unless you're stirring it up a lot. Um, but it also gives them something to burrow under or to burrow next to where and, it gives them a little more, uh, like bulk in the substrate. So, um, I definitely mix it into my substrate. It's in all of my bins. So, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I might just have to do that for my isopod mix. That is a very good point. I'm not doing it for my springtail mix because there actually is like a small amount of biochar and it's not really necessary. Have so many. I'll give you another benefit of charcoal. Charcoal is ridiculously high in surface area, so it's great for having beneficial bacteria growing on it. So that's the oh, thing that okay. mixed into your soil. Maybe the spring toes will burrow down, and they have a little bit of a feeding ground. And it's also when it's when it's when the chunks are on the surface, it's like a good clean place for them to lay their eggs. So yeah. I love it in all of my filter media for that point for the beneficial bacteria. That's why, I like, right here within arm's length, I got, you know, I got a little bit of it it's going right here. Um, and now I've got it. As soon as this is over, I'm going to be putting my orange springtails on the substrate this, mix and not on the charcoal. 
This is more of an conventional product plug, but I think it's worthwhile. I said charcoal on the surface can be beneficial. And also isopods really do like to use it as hide. People use it, people use mm -hmm. wood and I, people say, uh, charcoal has no benefits. Then why, why do isopods like to hide under it? And spring cells can lay their eggs under it. So, um, and you don't want yeah. to buy, you don't want to buy a giant bag of charcoal and sift through it just to get a couple of pieces. So run it over with your car or whatever he's going to tell you. <laughs> you can, let's see. Oh yeah. Well, he's got his thing too, that the charcoal provides some little air pockets like under the soil as well. You can bring yourself on over to springtails.us and I sell large chunks of charcoal for the purpose of hides for isopods, springtails, eggplant grounds. And they all, they have a minimum size. This is about the smallest you'll get. And I provide a mixed size for a very reasonable price. If you want large chunks of charcoal, um, uh, slightly unintentional product plug, but it, it, it does have potential benefit to be explored. So... As far as the hides um, in my clue guy bin, because I love my clue guy, I wanted them to be more, uh, I'm always looking for ways to make my display isopods more display. So I stacked the charcoal up like it was a rock formation, more or less. Um, and they had layers to go into. And then they could, you know, the closer to the soil it was, the more it was uh, saturated. So, because I kept them oh, pretty moist. Micro humidity gradients, which is something that yeah. Yeah. I told you about Edwin Lopez, Easy Eddie. He, oh, he's a genius. If he wants to show his face in public, he needs to come on this show. People from Reddit, they all know Easy Eddie. He is a genius with ice. I just want somebody named Easy Eddie on here. So um, that's, I'm sold. So yeah, hook me up with that guy. Tasted the premium springtail food. He's he's talked about uh, micro humidity gradients and stuff like that. What? Here you what? go. Here you go. Obey the snarf. She's getting uh -huh. in our head. Or he. I don't know. I'm not judging. I was. Yeah. Uh, we're a little late to be talking about. This is the product that I am most proud of. It does. It does smell better. Than um, my premium spring sale food was made through months and months of real world testing. I. Uh, I tested a ton of raw ingredients to see what springtails like. I eliminated the ones that they didn't particularly enjoy. And I included the ones that they did particularly enjoy. And some of them which they didn't particularly enjoy, I added in small quantities to the mix just to have that as a dietary uh, boost. Mm -hmm. And the number one food that springtails like is lion's mane and reishi mushroom powder. So that is the main ingredients in my mix. And if you know mushroom powders, you know that stuff is very expensive to buy on your own. So yeah, so this consists of lion's mane, reishi mushroom, the two main ingredients. It's also got rice flour, which you might hate on rice flour, but it's actually a really good food for springtails. Uh, rice flour, brewer's yeast, activated dry yeast, nutritional yeast, bee pollen, calcium carbonate, and spirulina and the the ratio had been experimented with to the extreme and this is the absolute very best springtail food on the market if you check out my website i have a very good a very nice picture of all the ingredients like all on a plate together and all the colors complementing each other i i was thinking about printing it out to show you guys but it's very earthy you can go on facebook i think you've posted in iso buddies before i think yeah so I, I've, I've seen it a couple times this week I'm really, I'm really proud of it. It's, it really is my proudest pot product, and and you're not going to get gypped when you buy it. It's a four ounce shaker bottle, and as I'm packing it, I'm tapping it down, so it's it's densely packed all the way to the brim. So it's not going to, yeah. Awesome. I, and it's and you know what? It's ten dollars a bottle for the very best spring tilt food out there. You buy a, uh, I'm going to name names. You buy Josh's Frog's spring tilt food for eight dollars. And it's just plain rice flour. Spend two dollars more and get the very best out there. Support small business while you're the at very it. Very best. We, I don't know that that's true. I'm gonna assume it's true. As far as spring till foods go, it's true. <laughs> no one, no one is, 
no one has put as much time and love into Spring Tales as I have so far, as far as hobbyists. Well, we here at Iso Buddies support you. Um, they're talking in my ear right now. We can't <laughs> say you have the best, but I believe you. I believe you. Uh, Beetle Guy asks, how much do you add at once? I take that as how much do you feed at once? And Probably. This is going to take some experimentation on your part, and it's going to differ by species and by culture. But add, add as much as they'll eat within three days. And I say that specifically because contrary to popular belief, springtails prefer fresh food, not moldy food. So add what they can eat within three days. That way it won't be molding and they can eat all that fresh mushroom powder and it won't get destroyed by mold. Some people say, um, like, the myth of feeding r moldy rice, total myth. You feed them rice and they actually eat the rice itself. They don't prefer to eat the mold off the rice. So if you're going to feed them rice, well, A, do rice flour instead. It's so much easier for a tiny little springtail to eat a powder than a whole pellet. And B, don't be feeding them an extreme amount of rice just so it can get moldy. They Springtails prefer fresh food. Uh, it's okay. Them preferring mold is a, is a bit of a myth. They clean up mold in, in clean up crew rolls. But when you're specifically culturing springtails, they prefer fresh food. I will say, um, and to get them to, to be a three-day, like that's a pretty broad term. So, sorry, I'm just trying to translate it into my own terminology. But uh, to give them like what they'll eat in three days, it'll take you a little while to figure out what that is. Yeah. So err on the side of caution. They'll live for a while with a small amount of food. So you said like months. Start with <clears> the <throat> oh. And it's going to vary by species. Some species like like the oranges that I'm working with, or Fosomia candida, they are some voracious, voracious little bugs. And then yeah. other, like some of the Lepidocirtis are more, uh, more slow going. Yeah, and I would also advise, if you're getting into that charcoal at all, the big pieces, use that as a food dish. So you're not having to scoop out any, uh, it doesn't toxify any of the soil. It's right on that piece of charcoal. You can take that out and rinse it off. Yes. Springtails are going to get up into it. Um, you can even put it at almost the soil layer, like either a really flat piece or push it into the soil, the substrate, so you have it right there. So, yeah, use like a food dish, but it's something I, that's going to be really easy. I like to provide my springtails bark. Um, okay. There'll be a chunk of soil on the surface. And, yeah, you adding that as a feeding platter is great. And uh, Artemis Pude said hi, and I'm going to say hi back because hello, buddy. <laughs> Waved at the, I waved at the tablet, and then I realized how much of a weirdo I look like. So I'm gonna clear that up. <laughs> like you can't see me waving at me, you, and you have no idea who I'm waving at. Yes, hello. I saw you waving, and I was like, maybe he's talking to somebody in Facetime while we're doing this. Um, but that's awesome. So hey, I, I, I feel like we got a lot of good information. Let me dip to the audience, guys. What do you? Uh, yeah, they do eat slime molds. They do eat slime molds. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Fal Aquatics and myself, we both have video. His video is excellent. He has a video of a red springtail eating slime mold with his. I was I was just talking about before you showed up. I was talking about your your camera, your your expensive uh, your expensive like microscope camera thing. His video is insane. You can see the mouth of the springtail moving, and it's eating the slime mold plasmodium. It is in incredible and. And he gave me permission. I'm going to end up, I'm working on a blog section for my website, and that's definitely going to go on the web eventually. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I like that idea of, of collaborating with all these different uh, uh, folks that are into the hobbies. So, um, yeah, let's go to some questions, guys. Do you have any questions that we didn't cover yet or maybe we missed? Because I'm, um, a lot of time viewers will know, I'm horrible at looking at audience questions. Uh, even though we do live streams, that's like the least part of it for me. <laughs> the biggest part is to get a, a non-edited reaction from the guests. So in a non-edited answer. So, uh, Nito, obey the snarf says Nito. Oh, I thought you spent like $100 on it. On what? Yes. He said it's a cheap microscope. I thought he had spent like $1,000 or $100 on it. <laughs> hey, it must just, it must work. It must be that $20 one that you got. Ken, uh, I actually do have something to bring up before we let the audience decide. It's something that had come up on my Facebook live stream before we started this. Um, oh, okay. 
the importance of using sealed bins, especially with isopods and what brand bins to use. Easy storage, 12 quart bins. They lock together on the top so you can stack them incredibly well. They're waterproof with a, with a really good gasket seal and you can hot glue the 30 micron mesh over over the ventilation hole so they're completely mite, nap, and escape proof. If I can convert Whoa. one using gasket bins here, that's what I want to do. And I just I had it set to the side to talk about, so I just wanted to bring that up real quick. I wonder if there'd be a way. I need to talk with Jose Avila and collaborate with him on something. I just had an idea. So you're giving me ideas to make something that you could get. Like he does um, some really great work with uh, designing things with his 3D printer. That's so much better. Um, sorry, guys. I have a new light rig, and I'm trying to figure it out, but I think that's much better lighting. Uh, so to have it where he puts it together and has the micron mesh pre-cut to put in there. So because his is like two pieces that screw on. And then they're adjustable and they're really cool as they are. But I feel like they, uh, I've been putting chiffon in there to keep stuff out, but it doesn't quite work. It works for the ice pods to keep them in and out, but it doesn't necessarily work for the the fungus gnats. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's really tricky to make a product. Like a, I've been really throwing around ideas in my head about trying to figure out a vent product because some people, most people don't buy pre-made bins so they'll want to just buy the vents and so yeah and I do want to be a one-stop shop for purely high quality products and having a really good micron mesh vent that you could install on your own bins would definitely be a game changer for beginners uh prevention is key start your out start with sealed bins and 30 micron mesh i beg of you don't get a gnat problem and don't get a mite problem because you are going to be hard pressed to solve it. I know I have been. I've been battling mites and gnats since I first got into the hobby. Just like most other because there's no there's no one stop shop for good advice out there yet. The the gold standard hasn't been set. And I I want to be a part of setting that gold standard. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I also feel like if you're starting a business or you're doing a business like this try to collab like you're about small businesses so clearly um try to collab with guys that are already doing it so like i would try to work in design in tandem with a guy like Jose, i'm gonna say jose vila again because he's really pushing the envelope on new oh, things like he's the bug hub right yeah 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 his vents look awesome they are he's awesome so he sent me like a dozen or something and i couldn't be happier but like i said i did put a mesh in right. there what's that He's got a bunch of 3D printers, right? Like, yeah, he definitely be yeah. yeah, and he's designing his own stuff. So he's got the the skills to actually design the product. If you come up with an idea or even a sketch of a prototype, like he can come up with that a is working awesome. prototype and work out the, you know, the kinks. So um, that way you're kind of, I don't know, maybe you could wind up putting a link to his stuff on your page or something. So, or just buy them from him and sell them. So either way, just a thought. So I like to keep everybody, the best thing about this hobby, the the arthropods and uh, I can't think of the words, but uh, what are what are shrimp? Crustaceans. They're, uh, crustaceans, but there's another, I don't remember. I, I, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but yeah, they're crustaceans. But, um, and I totally lost what I was going to say. So the community in these groups, in these hobbyists is so strong and to keep that going through the businesses as well, I think is a big deal. So um, I can't promote that enough. I can't promote that collaboration. I mean, do what you want to do is just my recommendation. So for the hobby's sake, for the community's sake, to keep your headaches low, so you're not spending 30 hours a week trying to design something, um, unless you're into that. If you're into do that, do it. Um, and and take it slow. When I first got into um, I unfortunately associated with and collaborate and nearly collaborated with people who ended up being rather sketchy. So if you're a small business just getting into this, uh, look look in as an outsider before you jump straight into it because you do not want to have your own reputation ruined by associating with 
unfortunately there is all too many people who are just in it for the money and yeah and that's a stain that's hard to remove once you get associated with horrible people um it's a stain that's hard to remove so i still fight it here for being uh attached to some people that were less than amazing so um i'll still get people asking me like oh yeah you do this but you used to work with this guy and it's like yeah there's a reason i used to like <laughs> Like, there's a reason that's a past tense situation. Some people make mistakes. You don't know everything when you start out. But take those two deep breaths and step back and really take a look at who you're connecting yourself to. Um, luckily, none of my guests do that before they come on. They just come on and then later. Pretty sure they all have a good time, for the most part. Um, oh, this, this is the most fun thing ever. The first time I was on this podcast, I was, like, high on life for, like, two days after. That was... <laughs> boost that spring tells us needed i was just was a baby. i was only 18 that the young a little tiny young ryan no you're been, like our eighth youngest guest so eighth youngest wow you've had some something like eighth youngest yeah we had our eight-year-old uh at the time she was eight years old from ophi spider verse um just adorable adorable young lady talking about tarantulas um we've had most of the ant kids are younger than you most of the ant guys that i've had on are younger than you so and like i said they're as knowledgeable in their department at least so they're they're wild i'll send them a picture like hey i found this ant in my yard is this something weird because i've never seen it before and they're like yeah man you sent us a picture of that same ant probably two weeks ago like that exact same one um and i'll be like oh okay and if you go out with them they're like you're probably the same way like you can spot springtails from a standing position these yeah. guys are like, yeah, these guys are like looking at tiny ants on the ground. They're like, oh, that's this. Oh, that's this. Like they're identifying it down to like Boy. the region just from <laughs> from like standing up, like just looking at the ground. Um, and I can't even tell there's ants there. You know, like it's it's weird to see these guys that are so into it. It's so hard to show my non bug loving friends springtails. I'll be like, there's like 50 of them right there. And they're like, Ryan, we can't see them. Just let us continue. The Stop trying to. Every little bug you see. Just let our do our let us do our thing. Um, <laughs> what is this population decline in certain springtail treated with dunks? Could be coincidence, but I stopped using them. Is that the mosquito dunks? Is that what they're talking about for the gnats? Mosquito uh, bits. I experimented with eight species way back when, and I didn't uh -huh. know the effects. But I'm not going to swear by mosquito dunks being 100. This is it. This is it. Um, I think somebody mentioned that earlier too. I think the machine is the best. That little fan with the UV light is probably one of the best things you can do. I, I found the hookup for the very best replacement pads. Don't get the name brand replacement pads. These ones are cheap from Amazon. They're Chinese made, but they're like five times as sticky and like five times as cheap. Let me grab one. I'll open up a pack. I think you buy them in like 24 packs. Uh, if you're, if See, you're, I just, you're getting replacement pads, I'm gonna have to open it to show you the logo. But look for this brand on Amazon. And they're so okay. sticky. And they're, they're way more sticky than the name brand pads. And they're way cheaper too, so. That's hey, that cool. works, man. Yeah, everybody in this hobby has cups of dirt that they try to show their friends or their family members who my family just stopped asking questions. My family and friend just stopped. Um, I know you, you told me just let them buy from you to see, but do you do you want to fill in the last like ten minutes here with talking about springtail shipping methods? <laughs> we can. We're already kind of overtime, but we can definitely do that. So, okay. like I said, you want to do a two-hour episode? Um, yeah, we were going to turn that into something else, like a, a total shipping thing. I was going to do a uh, my plan is to do a round table on it with a couple different types of shipping methods like springtails isopods which i'm sure are pretty much the same shipping method um more or less and then you know like vertebrates like you've got your your reptiles your i don't know it, stuff in a bird in a box david and i can do my own magic and try to get us a good audience for that too if i'm going to be in let's table. save it because we're due for a round table so i want to do a round table on shipping so guys that'll come up um with some folks that i know know their stuff so um down to like really delicate species 
that they don't even really like to ship and they're pro shippers. And I suck at shipping. So anyone who's had a, if you're one of the four people that's received a package from me, I apologize again. Um, I'm the worst. I'm the worst shipper ever. So I might as well just dump them in a cardboard box with some tape and good luck. A shipping method ISO Buddies episode might be your biggest episode ever. This that that could be huge. I mean, I thought of it when you mentioned it. It never occurred to me, but I think that that's a big deal. I think people uh, need ISO to see more of that. Millipede people, tarantula people, ant people, and a springtail guy. We won't have that many people on, but um, <laughs> we'll definitely <laughs> get the bases covered. I feel like a tarantula might be an easier one to ship. But, really? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the bigger the thing is, the easier it'd be to ship. Just a matter of keeping the the temperatures right. So, like, not shipping in the middle of winter or high summer. If you are shipping in the middle of winter... Yep. Those are the guys. And then I have my ice packs, too. Well, I just have ice packs now. Shipping in the summer, get some ice packs. <laughs> Use them right. With, and you always got to use phase 22 cryo packs. Yes. Uh, it seems like uh, it's getting late, though, and we're starting to lose some people. It is. We lost about half the audience. So, And that's normal. That's normal. So um, towards the end, a lot of people have to dip out, but they'll watch it later. It's not all about just watching it live. So it'll be good. Um, yeah, see, even Ruby Sosa. Ruby Sosa? I didn't know you were into bugs. First time being able to catch the stream. Um, I get into Ruby Sosa for the artwork that they do. So they're kind of a, a fun little artist that does really cool stuff and then really goofy stuff. And that's why, yeah, that's why I started following them. Uh, cool to see them here. So welcome. Uh, I'm the impression large tarantulas were delicate. Yeah, obey the snarf. They can be, um, like they're, uh, they're gaster essentially. I, what do they call it in a spider and abdomen? Um, that can be delicate, but that's if they're falling from a great height or something like that. I don't think in a box that's, you know, there's all kinds of packing around them and they're in kind of a tight container. I don't think that would be an issue. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put something in the comments, guys. If, you th if I said anything dumb, which is probable, call me out in the comments. So anyway, Ryan, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having um, me. I appreciate and it again. Okay. So I love your... Yeah, I love your excitement. I love your passion for the hobby. I love all of it. So keep it up. And I wish we'll, your business well. We'll throw those links in the description for the people that will be rewatching this or whatever. Yeah, I have to go up and get my phone. So send me the links and I'll put them in the description after, afterwards. Yep. Okay, guys? And I think we talked about them enough or put them in the comments. So folks, have a great night. I'm going to I'm gonna dip you out and get them to do all the like and subscribe stuff. And then, well, I think I just did it. Yeah, guys, you know how to do the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell thing. Well, Leave if you a want comment. To... Goodbye. What's that? If you want Is that to get it? Rid... Yeah, if you no. want to get rid of it, bye. We'll just go out together. It'll be uh, awkward because no one ever knows when it ends. So.